What was very interesting to see was breakfast. Everything was set up at breakfast, whether you knew it or not, because eventually the conversation would usually go from, did you see the fights? Then something is said, and then it starts. Um, did you realize that that was setting up from breakfast from Bob Evans going into the gym? You're like, I'm going to prove this motherfucker. Oh, right. yeah. Yep. I was already devising what I was going to do. Because um, that, to me, seeing the, the, towards the end of that, that was such a critical part to what made the gym was one, I remember uh, Jake Norman when he would come down ordering dessert. Yep. There's so many people who went through the whole menu of Bob Evans, but no one wanted to miss breakfast because something was going to be said and you could understand the tone of the day based on that. Yep, breakfast was awesome. Um, breakfast was great. What were, do you have any memorable stories? For, I know there's a lot, but is there any ones that come to mind? Man, the whole, the psychopath. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's a huge one. Because Lou and his uh, tattoo, he told me, <laughs> Coker, Coker, hey, look over it, Lou's. And I look over and get up, and I'm like, the fuck is on his knuckles? And he thought it was psychopath, but they had forgotten a letter, and it said psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what the fuck is that on your hands, Lou? And he looked up and, was, ah, and start talking about his tattoo artist and fucking. Uh, <laughs> I, I said I ain't never seen a psychopath. Well, the, <laughs> the little bit in that is he goes, "It's uh, it's what they do in the penitentiary." And yeah. you're, you're like, "I've been to prison <laughs> a, and I ain't met no psychopath." No, nope. uh, dude, that was. <laughs> And then um, he turned over his hands and he had hard work tattooed in his palms. I just remember you, like, that was, yeah. I always gave him shit about his tattoos, man. I was like, man, make sure you, where, where do you get your tattoos? And he'd tell me, oh, I get them off of that. I was like, okay, well, you white talker. I was like, because I don't ever want to fucking go there. I fuck that. <laughs> the only guy I ever knew that had what was it five bowling balls tattooed on the back of his, his head <laughs> and he's the only guy what the fuck you got what are the bowling balls Lou he, he went to a colorblind <laughs> tattoo artist to, like <laughs> that's the truth that's for a, yeah. I have totally elite in five <laughs> different weight classes so that's what the bowling balls mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah now I love those tattoos but his swords I used to fuck him up what was this that what was his daggers in his back yeah the daggers I was like why you got tennis rackets on your, your back, back. <laughs> You and Rob Pilger they gave him the most yep. the most shit over his tattoos. The funniest thing though was one another one of them. Do you remember this? We were sitting in there and he goes to pay the bill, and he reaches in his pocket and he's like, he's sitting there and he's fucking thinking. He can see these wheels turning. He can't find his money, and he shakes his head. He's like, man, I fucking gave that crackhead I think my whole money clip last night. He gave some fucking crackhead bum. He's like, I remember him. I must have gave him my whole fucking money clip. <laughs> he because that was Lou. He's always giving money out to the the bums and everything else. He had given his whole money clip, and he couldn't pay the bill. <laughs> so he thought he had to come back. He was so upset. I I remember that to where, but because his credit was good at Bob Evans. <laughs> Um, I mean, at some point we had 30 people there. Yep. Never paid, but I, I remember that. I remember him too pulling out his, uh, his vitamins. Like he'd have all his tablets. <laughs> and, and, be, and then to be changed. And he'd swallow it and he'd swallow it like a penny. I remember that. I remember when there was a button stuck to the bottom of his, uh, you know, in some of the shorts, they'd uh -huh. saw a button. And, um, he, he thought it was a tablet and he ended up ripping the pocket out of his shorts. Uh, there's, or when he, um, his, he, I bet him 10 bucks he wouldn't eat a grape from the ground. Uh, like, it was nasty, and he, he's like, Ten Fuck, I yeah. always told you right there, that's the wrong yeah. bet to make. <laughs> yeah, but at breakfast, and two, I remember the time, uh, I'll never forget the day, it was the one day the two of us had ordered oats for whatever reason, because it was Bob Evans' oats was terrible, and the day Chuck walked in. Oh, yeah, yep. And um, because yep. we used to sit, 
away from the main table. We're right, we could see everything, but there was the main table, there was the loose seat, and there was everyone else. There was the loose seat, and then directly across from Lou was the seat that whoever sat there was getting kicked out of the jammer that was quitting, because it was the jinx seat. Yeah. And then you had the seat next to Lou, and that was Lou's pet. Whoever at that point was Lou's little project, that's where he sat. And then I don't remember what then, the other. Then there was the the bottom two corners. <laughs> yep. Was if you didn't want to be involved, you would sit on the same side as Lou because he couldn't turn his head that far <laughs> to that corner. So you get away with it. And yep. uh, and if you're in the back corner, you were just engaged. Like you were. Yeah. It was a. There was a whole dynamic to where yep. you sat. They would sit right across from everybody because they could just sit back and watch and listen. Yeah. Watch everything unfold. Well, yep, we were sitting there eating breakfast, and in comes uh, Chuck and Sonny. You're, yep. And I remember looking at you, looking at me, and I'm like, what, what the fuck? And as if it was two long lost buddies, as soon as Chuck sat down with Lou, like that. It was like the, it was like he just seen him yesterday. It was, Walks in and he said, hey, Chuck, what's up? Yeah, and boom, right in the training. Yep. And to me, right there, I could see how important it was uh, breakfast. Right, right, you like, they used to do this all the time. Yep. And they would break down stuff. It was, uh, yeah, that was one of, one of the many. Was, yeah. And that's a, that's and like the food a, was terrible. Horrible. Terrible. It still is. And, yeah. and, but it's, it's a dynamic that it, 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 it's a, it meant something, yeah. you know, and it was a time to sit there and eat and talk about training, talk shit, talk about the fights, do whatever, wake up, you know, and just kind of, Hang, cause hang out with everybody. Cause even if you didn't like some of the guys there or all the guys there, you still were kind of a family. You know, the the whole breakfast thing. I mean, hell, Chuck and I, we still have breakfast every Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. You, we usually train on Saturdays, but that's something. Now I've had breakfast with Chuck now for how many years ago was that? Seven. Yeah. Six, so seven. like the last seven years, pretty much every yeah. weekend for the most part. You're right though, it did allow you to see glimpses into other people's lives. Yep. And you're like, oh, that makes sense why that's their decision-making system. And you're like, okay. And yep. then two, I saw for other pe for other lifters, that's the motivation you needed, like this fucker. Like it just allowed you to, um, just to process the gym dynamics before it. And it gave you very unique access to Louis. Yep. To, uh, if you ever, there was a time, Louis would get to Bob Evans about 5.15. Bob Evans would open at six and he'd be at the door. Sometimes he would open up Bob Evans with people there. Yep. You wouldn't come to breakfast until 6.30. Yeah, otherwise, you'd yeah, get pissed yeah. off. That, that 30 was minutes time. was loot. But if you had something going on, so if you came to breakfast and someone was there before 6.30, either someone's going to jail, someone's in trouble, but that gave you very unique access to Lou. And then after that, the smaller groups, when maybe four people would turn up, that's when you'd... Like you get these great stories and uh, going to meets, like getting bre I used to love getting breakfast uh, right when we get or the day before the meet. Yep. Because Lou was all jacked up, waiting yep. for people to that do was his stuff. Favorite time. Yeah.